This is why I keep so much junk. Uh, I have to find these two speakers are both in like new condition in my junk stash of speakers to replace this Hitachi. Now granted I'd love to use the Hitachi it's 4 ohm you know but it's obviously shot and this came out of this which is the speaker mount I'm going to use on my Z uh, 8 ohms is probably okay because I have an aftermarket stereo anyway. I would be surprised if it's not 8 ohm rated since it's a stereo. Just a wild guess. I mean, I could be completely wrong with that. Frankly, it doesn't really matter. 8 ohms, 4 ohms, maybe a little less output from these, but you know, I don't plan on thumping anyway. They do fit. Let me try to do this while poking a hole in the fresh speaker. They fit perfect. So this will make a nice, this will be a nice replacement so I can put the stock location of the speakers on my 280Z. The only issue I have to work out next, I did test these, they test fine, they sound good, there's no rubbing the voice coil or anything like that. But the problem I have is this is designed for, never mind that, uh, this is designed for being mounted on the driver's side. So it'll end up this bend right here is incorrect I'm gonna to have to duplicate this I'm gonna I'm gonna mark where these bends are flatten this out bend it up this way and then back that way again try to duplicate this bend and I'll have to I'm pretty sure these are welded in I'm not sure how I don't think they're pressed in so I can see a hole there I, I suspect what happens is they just push those things in there and use like a spot welder to stick them in place so what I'll do is let's see hmm, I might just grind this off or maybe try to drill this I'm not sure what the best way is to get these out of here um, and I'll just use regular you know metric hardware to replace it it doesn't matter if these are captured or not because frankly you can install the speaker in this thing tighten up both sides and it just uses two bolts to hold it on anyway so if I was ever replacing the speaker, you would unbolt this, take it out, and put it on. So I mean, I don't even know why they use captured nuts. I mean, it maybe makes a fraction easier to put together. So anyway, that'll be today's project. Hopefully, we'll be able to get these nice speakers in, replace these. Oh, it even came with a little thing here. Which let's do it right. Give you the whole shooting match here. Again, do not poke a hole in the speaker core the cone. That goes on like that. This cute little thing goes over and covers it. Of course, I've installed it with the terminals pointing the wrong way. So just for demo purposes, let's make sure this is all going to work. There you go. There you have it. And I guess the idea is that this keeps any junk from falling down and maybe interfering with that with that cone. I don't really know. It does have a paper cone just like the original. I like that. And these are going to be fairly high output speakers. Uh, by output I mean high efficiency speakers because uh, this thing's rated 6 watts and seriously uh, I wouldn't express put, expect to put more than a couple watts to it at most anyway. Uh, good speakers don't need 100 watts of power. Uh, modern day speakers. I want, I want specifically to stay away from modern car speakers just because of that. They're not particularly efficient. They got these huge cones that have massive movement and they're designed to be used with huge amounts of power for creating thump. Again, not interested. So I needed fairly high efficiency speakers to work with the vintage stereo that's in it right now. Anyway, I'll come back after I manage to get those bolts out and see if I can straighten out and show you a picture when it's all done. More later. And just, uh, hour later you have a speaker ready to go on the passenger side um, I'm gonna paint the metal of course and the speaker is just temporarily tied with some screws but this bin now is up in this way where which it needs to be in order to fit into the uh, 
passenger side like that. See, I just did a little bit of body, a little metal work to uh, straighten it out, rebend it, get the correct bend and all that kind of good stuff. It wasn't that big of a deal. Uh, the big deal was remembering which way it was, which thankfully I had the other video. Because once you flatten it out, it's really easy to get to confused. Like, wait, which way was it supposed to go? You know what I mean? So, anyway, I just confirmed that this bend is supposed to be out and back for this side. Um, you see it's all mounted with the, the thing on the back. All I need to do now is get the right screws. These are just temporaries and they're holding in. They didn't have the right length. I didn't have four of the right length. I'm going to see about transplanting this nice little cable and the strain relief over to here. Maybe tie the strain relief off on this screw head right here uh, so I can reuse this, which I like. Even though my wiring harness doesn't have the uh, this to go in. So I don't know how that works. Maybe somebody who has one of these and done this before knows was the wiring harness special order for the stereo equipped version because I didn't see any anything like this on the passenger side that this would plug into. Regardless, I'm going to use this kind of wiring and if, I, and if the wiring harness does not indeed have this, I'll have to obviously try to get a, a like gauge and coloring. I'd like to keep it all as original as possible and I'll route it alongside the uh, original wire harness back to the stereo. Anyway, there you have it. Uh, it looks pretty good. Uh, I'll finish it up and to pull my interior part again one last time hopefully to install this speaker on the passenger side and its matching speaker on the driver side and I'll have some proper speakers uh, for the Z. Thanks for watching. Bye.